the opportunity. Um, your Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to uh, get this opportunity once more to be able to talk uh, about my country. It's a country I love so dearly and it's a country that's so close to my heart and when I get the chance or the opportunity to be able to highlight or sell the country, I don't uh, relinquish the chance. So thank you for the opportunity. Today, I will be able to talk about uh, investment opportunities in Cameroon. I don't understand why it goes so fast. It will be necessary that we take it step after step. But uh, I will begin by saying that I will not present Cameroon any longer here. What I would definitely want to do is that I will give you a picture of what the wealth of the country, the potentials of the country, and why is it important that potential business people should be interested in this country. Cameroon is located somewhere in West Central Africa, and it's got a very unique position, the Gulf of Guinea. That region is extremely rich, extremely rich in natural resources, but also in its geopolitical location. Uh, and Cameroon being positioned there has a very, very uh, strategic location. For every be any businessman who is interested in this country, you might be interested in knowing how the, the country is faring. This is the economic outlook of the country and it tells us that Cameroon actually has an economic growth rate of 5.9%. 5.9% might sound a little bit low as compared to Ghana with an economic growth rate which is about 12%. But if you look at it in terms of other countries in the sub-region or other countries in Europe and the rest of the world, 5.9% is extremely high. Denmark's economic growth rate at the moment is not up to 4%. So if Cameroon has got an economic growth rate which is close to 6%, it's something, and it's very, very significant. And this economy is kind of a, a middle income economy which has prospects of emerging. So it makes good sense. And you can see the progression that has gone from 2004 until now. It's showing some uh, uh, rate of stability. The instability only came around during the peak period of the economic crisis, but the stability is actually going on at this particular moment. Can you carry on? Okay, I will talk about potential growth engines of Cameroon and also potential business opportunities. Well, there are several areas that Cameroon's got a competitive business advantage over other countries, and I will be able to enumerate some of those areas. Those areas mainly are in the natural resource uh, areas, mainly, but also it's about its location and it's about the history of the country and it's about the, 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 the economic potential of the country. The first is the geographical location. Cameroon is located within a zone that is considered to be a transit zone and gives it a comparative advantage in the South African, in the, in the Central African sub-region. Uh, it shares borders with about six different uh, African countries and based on that, it's got some kind of economic exchange with these countries. It's referred to the, the economic union is referred to as the CEMAC, and its main partner in the sub-region is Nigeria. That's the biggest partner in the sub-region that Cameroon actually does business with. Well, there is something that is happening in the sub-region right now that is very much of importance to take note of. It's about stability and every other business person will be interested in knowing 
if the area is actually secured for business. A few days ago, I actually got a phone call from a Danish diplomat. And this diplomat was interested in knowing if it was safe to go and actually uh, do business in my country any longer because they have heard of an Islamic set that is actually uh, settling within the region. My response to him was that the threat is real. Yes, Boko Haram does exist. The threat is real, but it's nothing to be worried. It's nothing to be scared about. There is a very big political um, uh, will to be able to chase our Boko Haram. But I just want to let you guys to understand what this threat means. It's an Islamic group that is based in Nigeria, and they have their claims. Their claims is that they actually want to turn the northern part of Nigeria into some kind of an Islamic state with the coming of the Sharia law. But they are very close to the northern part of Cameroon, and they are taking advantage of the looseness of this area because most of their arms come from Sudan, so this is like a transit zone for the Boko Haram. Boko Haram has got no claims on Cameroon. Boko Haram has got nothing on Cameroon. They're only using Cameroon as a corridor. So this is no trade to any economic business person or anybody who's got the potential to go to Cameroon. And I want to say that the heads of states in the sub-region with the assistance of France and other developed friends, they are taking every necessary step to be able to step out this threat which is on the investment in the region and also on the tourism of the region. So Boko Haram is not really something that a business person for now should be scared of. Cameroon has had political and economic stability from its independence until today. Nothing whatsoever will be able to change this economic and political instability, not even Boko Haram. So please do not be concerned or do not be worried that terrorism is coming closer to the northern part of Cameroon. It's no business to be worried about. Well, I will also say that it is important to do business in an area where you can be trust the workforce. And the workforce here, I mean that Cameroonians are highly educated, they are well trained, please go back. Cameroonians are highly educated, they are well trained, uh, they start a very, very competitive age, and they are inexpensive to hire. And we are also saying that Cameroon has got a diaspora that is something that as a businessman you can tap into. Cameroon's diaspora is extremely, extremely skilled and rich. You can tap into this diaspora, bring them back into the country. This, is, this was last month when I was uh, in, in Strasbourg, giving one of these kind of presentations in Strasbourg about the potential of Africans in the diaspora who has to have to go back to their continent and make an input as the continent is emerging. It's us. It's not Europeans going back to Cameroon and making these investments happening. It's the Africans in the diaspora and the Africans who are based in, in the country who should be able to drive this change and not someone from outside or expatriate from outside because we are highly skilled, we are highly educated and we have the potential to drive change within our given countries. So please, if you want to do business in Cameroon, link up with these young guys who are well trained, well educated in Denmark, in Sweden, and Europe, and in the US or whatsoever. They will drive change and business back for you the best way you can in the African continent. Well, I also want to talk about a few good potentials that Cameroon has got. Cameroon has got oil resources, but oil was a business in those days. Oil contributes nowadays to about 40% of the GDP, but oil is not the, bear, the major driving force. The major driving force in the country is in the energy sector, is in the agriculture sector that employs about 80% of the population. And it's in the tourism sector. This is the sectors that Western business people might be interested in. Carry on.
It's also important that if you want to do business in a country, you know about its monetary policy. If you put your money in the bank, are you sure that there's security that you get the money back and whatsoever? We have very, very safe banks, so please, there is no fear about doing business and banking in the country. They have the cultural potential. 80% of the population depend on agriculture. The rural area is very rich. The soils are extremely very rich. Cocoa, coffee, cotton, rubber, bananas, oil seeds, whatsoever, are very important for you to be able to exploit. But, but, but what I want to emphasize on is that the best areas that you can invest in agriculture is agricultural processing. We produce a lot of goods and a lot of agricultural products, but they perish. These agricultural products do not get processed, they do not get seasoned whatsoever. So after I see one season or two seasons or a couple of years, we do not have these agricultural products whatsoever in the markets any longer. Processing these agricultural products makes good sense. And the one example that I can give you is just about getting ovens for drying cocoa in the production uh, areas. In the, for example, the, the rainy season, which coincides with the harvest season. When you get ovens dry the cocoa, it makes it possible that cocoa is available throughout the year for harvesting and for export. Elton. Forestry sector is also one good sector that a business person might be interested in, uh, in investing in the country. It might be uh, timber exploitation. It might also be logging or whatsoever. Wildlife is very important and it's in the northern part of the country where we have lots of reserves and natural parks or whatsoever. It is also important you can think about doing an investment in this particular area. This is just a species that is only found in Cameroon alone. It's a kind of, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Then some areas that we might think that we can do an investment and not put in too much and too much of an input. It's doing an investment in either solo, but investment in solo or investment in wind energy. What is clear is that Cameroon has got a wonderful abundance of uh, solar energy readily available that you can be able to transform this into um, either solar panels and actually provide local energy to the, to the people, or you can actually go wind power. It, it is expensive, quite all right. But we do understand that if you make the effort and bring this kind of an investment back to the local people, it will pay off. Real estate is also another business that you can think about investing and by real estate here in Cameroon, people like modern construction, which also can be blended with traditional construction. I will now talk about a few challenges. It's an emerging country, it's a growing country, it's a developing country. There are lots of challenges involved in doing business in the country. I will not shy away from that. I will not hide this from you. Infrastructure is one big issue. Roads, bridges are absent. Power is absent. Internet is slow. Electricity cuts happen instantaneously. So you can set up a business and overnight, electricity just you know uh, ceases without notice. So these are some of the challenges that you must expect as a business person when you're coming in. And you might be able to take appropriate measures to be able to say, okay, if you're coming to do an installation, then you should come along with alternative energy or alternative electricity just to be able to make your business move. Cross-border movement of goods and services is also one very big issue. Red tapes. We have something in the country where policemen have the opportunity to actually put money into their pockets just by duping businessmen and getting money. So these kind of challenges are very, very uh, possible within the sub-region. The use of roadblocks to be able to um, hamper trade and uh, the movement of goods and services is also one important thing. 
The one also caution, if you want to do business in the country, even though you might go through the normal services, the embassy or whatsoever, we always advise you, please, do a double check. Sometimes there are lots of scammers involved in the country. Do a double check before you can be able to commit contract whatsoever. There are lots of scammers and fraudulent people also involved. It's not only in Cameroon, it's found all over the place. It's found in India, it's even found in the developed country. But we just want to say, please be aware of this, that this kind of that negative devices or negative uh, vices might, might exist. Well, I would like to refer to the World Bank and also international uh, parameters of how they classify countries that are best in doing business. The first one is that they look at the ease of doing business in the country. Cameroon is not doing so badly as compared to the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa. In terms of how easy is it for you to be able to start a business, get a license, be able to employ your workers and register your property and get credit and also be able to pay your taxes very easily. Cameroon is not actually doing so bad. But as I've mentioned, there are also a lot of drawbacks, there are also a lot of issues that are hampering business in that particular area. So this is how Cameroon actually fares. So competition in the area is very much a big issue because as I said, they are very, there are some factors that actually make the cost of production high, like energy, which I did mention, uh, the curves, infrastructure, lack of infrastructure, and all, also other issues. So it makes competition within the, the, the country somehow challenging. But the government is doing a lot to be able to ease business and make the business climate easy. And the first issue that, or the first regulation that the government has been able to put in place is that you can be able to create a business in 48 hours in the country. 48 hours is possible for you to create a business in Cameroon. Well, it's possible for someone to say 48 hours in theory, but the government is doing everything possible to be able to make this happen. Then, if you create a new company in Cameroon, it takes two years. Two years for you to start paying taxes. So you have a tax exoneration for two good years. We don't even get that in Denmark. Then you create a company and for two years, you go for two years without paying any taxes. Especially the small and medium-sized corporations. We're not talking of the very big ones. Small and medium-sized corporations. You get tax exoneration for two years. This is something that it's a, a good attraction for any investor that wants to come into the country. Then there's been a couple of changes because clearing goods at the port has always been a main issue and a businessman doesn't have time to, to spend. So if he or she is sending goods to the port, he wants that there's some timeline that is being respected so your goods are being cleared. There are a lot of measures that have been put into place to make the clearance time reduce and the clearance time goes faster. There are lots of challenges, we agree, but I mean, the, the government and the system is trying to do something to improve that. Processing time of containers, I just talked about that, is gradually being reduced. Well, there's one important issue that I want to highlight before I conclude. Cameroon has a plan to become an emerging economy in 2035. We might say that's wishful thinking. But for me in particular, I think the country has the potential to become an emerging economy before 2035. And why do I say so? We have the potential. What is missing is the willingness to drive it. The potential is there. The human resource is there, the natural resource is there. You combine this together and put the willingness and everything goes extremely very fast. Is the willingness there? That is what we need to see and we need to talk about. Just carry on, please. Well, government has the strong willingness. Last year, I was at the World Bank, and that's the Minister of Finance. He gave a strong keynote at the World Bank talking about the possibility of Cameroon meeting this target by 2035. And I was at the audience and I went to up to him and said, please 
if you can translate your words into action, then I think that there's no reason whatsoever why Cameroon will not be able to meet this target. And what is the government doing? These are some of the projects that the government is doing right now to be able to make business, facilitate business, facilitate growth, and actually make it possible that they can meet the emergence target of 2035. They are building new seaports. Douala Seaport is very, very congested to be able to manage the cargo that comes into the Douala Seaport because Douala Seaport serves Central Africa, serves Chad, serves Sudan, serves Niger, and quite a good number of other countries because most of these countries are landlocked. So the creepy deep seaport is a measure to be able to decongest the Douala Seaport and ease business within the region. Karim. Electricity is a key issue. So the government has actually been able to develop a new hydroelectric power which is referred to as the Lompanga. Lompanga has the potential to be able to provide energy and hydroelectricity not only for Cameroon but for the rest of the neighboring countries of Cameroon. So when this project is complete, the whole issue and problem about electricity cuts and energy shortages will actually be solved somehow. Well, road infrastructure has been a nightmare. Movement from the major city, Yaoundé to Douala, has always been a nightmare. So what the government is actually doing right now is that they are in the process of building a new highway that will be able to link the two major cities and also to be able to bring build new train uh, uh, rails that will be able to link the major cities. So these are some of the investment projects that are in place to be able to meet the emergence by 2035. Well, I will close off by saying that if you want to do business in Cameroon, beware of the following. You must know of the following. The first, uh, the formal business culture in Cameroon is that well, as a businessman, you might be a Danish man, and in Denmark, we know people are very, very formal and very, very casual here. I wear jeans and sneakers and go to class. But in Cameroon, if you're going to do business, you have to be in suits to do business. That's, that's the way it is. Otherwise, you come to an office and you have the potential to do business but people don't even look at you. They treat you second class or last because they, you are not well dressed. It's just part of the Cameroon. You don't even get the audience to meet a minister. So it's part of the Cameroon culture. Well, it might be a colonial inheritance or whatsoever that we adore suits or we adore formal dressing or whatsoever. But Please, if you want to do business in Cameroon, get out of your European Danish informality and be formal in Cameroon. The second is that Cameroonians love titles a lot. Mr. President, His Excellency, Doctor, Professor, they like that a lot. If you want to do business in Cameroon and you come to an office and you need a service, if it's a director, don't just walk in and say, Jean, can you help me? Mr. Director Jean, please, can you help me? Then you get the service done. <laughs> this is the ethics of the country. We can't go around it. Definitely. You just cannot be able to go around it. Accept the culture of the people, accept the ethics and the values of the people, and then you will be part of them and you get what you need to get, and then you walk out of the country. When you're back to Denmark or to Europe, you accept your informality. That's the way it is. The third one is that, well, and which is a very bad one, is that uh, mm, Cameroonians don't have any sense for time. No sense for time at all. So, if you are very, very time conscious and if you do not have patience in that country, you will not be able to do business. Even government officials come late to official ceremonies. <laughs> so, if you are doing business in the country, you have got to be patient. It's unfortunate, but please, this is the reality and we need to say it.
Well, also doing business in the country is an issue about personal relationship. You need to know someone somewhere for that person to know someone somewhere for you to be able to get your business done. So please don't go do all the paperwork from Denmark and then as you're walking into Cameroon you feel, okay, you are a successful business person. No, it is also important to create a business network partner or somebody from Denmark that you know that will accompany you, take you down and introduce you to someone and it goes. That is networking. And it's not only in Cameroon that's done, even in Denmark it's done. I've got business partners in, in, in Denmark. That's the way it's done. So please take this very, very important and very vital. Carry on. I will close up by saying that Cameroon is a country that has got a lot of food, the food sufficient, and Cameroonians are extremely happy people. Sometimes they can even be too happy in the midst of poverty. So you will come and meet a people that all the time they are very happy, either they are talking about football or they are drinking alcohol or they are talking about some other thing. They are extremely happy people. If you go back to Cameroon to do business, you will always go back there again. Thank you for listening. <laughs>
give it, give it, give it. No, give it us like. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. AJ! AJ! I to be the soji. You can dunk and that soji. Oh, wait, oh, wait. I'm good soji. Oh, wait. This is the soji. Oh, wait. Man, you soji. Oh, wait. Cameroon soji. Oh, wait. AJ! 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 Chop the bomb. Wah! Chop the bomb. Wah! Chop the bomb. Wah! Chop the Thank you. That was uh, that was a display from uh, my new community in uh, Copenhagen in uh, Denmark and Sweden. Actually, these guys, most of some of them are from uh, Sweden and some of them are from Copenhagen. So uh, they have their association here. Hand over this certificate of recognition of uh, their acceptable charitable humanitarian patriotic indispensable conduct of serving the nation abroad, home and abroad to the president of ACAD. Afroscandic. Today I have with me uh, Nicola Hansen, yeah, CEO of Living Energy International. Thank you, Nicholas. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do in uh, in your company? Well, maybe yes, maybe absolutely. Maybe. We specialize in renewable energy, primarily you, solar energy. You, you, you and we bring uh, our solar energy technology to the sub-Saharan market. Of course, naturally also Cameroon, where we've already set up an operation. The uh, technologies we do within solar produce electricity mm -hmm. and they also make yes. battery storage mm -hmm. and we also do things like uh, lighting, street lighting on solar yes. and surveillance from, uh, based on solar. Okay. So. It's renewable energy, is it you generate it yourself then, then Mary, using biomass or how do you, can you tell us more about this? Ah, the renewable also energy gener is generated on the solar uh, panels okay. and these are the solar panels that Best we either produce for, uh, and, or we install them for uh, this different size of projects. We are do large projects where we do solar power plants that feed all the electricity into the grid. Or we can do uh, smaller systems for uh, buildings where we install these solar panels on the buildings or next to the buildings so they power the building. And maybe they even store the electricity in large battery packs so you can have the operation running 24 7 based on the energy from the sun. Do you think this renewable energy using the solar panel do you think is uh, economical compared to the? normal uh, form of generating electricity in Africa. Well, the general form of uh, the general way of generating electricity in Africa is often through uh, diesel generators. And diesel generators are expensive in many ways. First of all, you have the cost of the diesel, you also have the transportation cost often to bring the diesel somewhere. Then uh, what our experience tells us is that some people also tend to borrow some of the diesel. Then you have the diesel generator itself that has to be maintained. And of course all of this is very polluting on top. So when you look at all these factors and you start calculating solar energy, it's very economical. Very. That's so then, in one word, could you tell our viewers why your company is going to have more competitive edge over other company, companies around that do solar energy? Absolutely. I mean, first of all, we are a technology-driven company. So the technologies we specialize in are state-of-the-art. A lot of the technologies we see being implemented, not just in Cameroon, but in the general Maybe. African market, Maybe are based on not the latest technology, let's put it like so one. Number two is, we is don't just go in and do projects in uh, Africa. We also normally set up an operation, so we are cultivating the jobs. We're bringing in jobs, and we're bringing in knowledge. So, state-of-the-art technology, plus job creation, plus knowledge transfer. I think this gives us a very strong edge. Thank you, that's great. Uh, why do you choose Cameroon for your business? Well, as it is with Africa, Africa is about connections. And we are fortunate to have the connections on the right level in Cameroon. Okay. So we chose to start up there, plus Cameroon seemed like a smart option because Cameroon is very stable, 
<laughs> and it has been stable for many, many years, and that was also important for us. And then, of course, we've been following the developments with respect to the new port that's opened up in Kribi, which also gives a lot of opportunities. So we see Cameroon as a, as a center for us, for Central and West Africa, the expansion from there. We want to run it out of Cameroon. That's excellent. And uh, we hope your business uh, grow more in Cameroon. And uh, we wish you all the best, and we hope our viewers have got a lot of things about uh, your solar uh, energy panel in Cameroon. Okay. Thank you for coming. For Thank vision. you for your time and for the opportunity. Uh, and this is somewhere for Afroscandi. Today I have... Ransom. Ransom. Mm. You're a... a, a, a and as you say, Professor at Metropolitan University College. That's great. We've heard about your nice presentation, and that is uh, inspiring. Can you tell our viewers more about opportunities in Cameroon for investors to go to Cameroon? Yeah, um, there are lots of uh, opportunities. And um, it's just that many people are not aware of these opportunities and I think that it's our responsibility to be able to uh, expose some of these opportunities to uh, potential investors. Uh, some of the areas where potential investors might be interested in, I think it's the subsoil, the underground soil. The, the topsoil has so much been exploited. The subsoil has not been exploited yet. And when I talk about the subsoil here, I'm meaning aspects of, you know, underground okay. water, aspects of minerals that are still underground that are yet to be tapped whatsoever. And then if you talk about the, the, the topsoil, I would look at readily available areas where they have not been tapped at all. Wind is readily, readily available. We have abundance of sun that is readily available. We can transform this very easily through either wind energy or through uh, solar energy and bring energy readily available to the people because we need energy to be able to drive the kind of growth that we need in Cameroon right now. If Cameroon is talking about becoming an emerging country in 2035, that growth cannot come about until we get energy. Energy is needed for production, uh -huh. energy is needed for lighting, uh -huh. energy is needed for any other activity or service that has to be undertaken. Uh -huh. This is very, very important. Yeah, then we're thinking about infrastructure. Uh -huh. The country definitely lacks infrastructure. Uh -huh. And we do not need heavy investment to go about infrastructure. The All the natural the material to build infrastructure, be, uh, road, bridges, or whatsoever is readily busy. available. Uh -huh. All what we might import is just the machinery. Uh -huh. The local know-how and technology is available because the people are highly skilled, highly trained to be able to build the infrastructure. So I am also saying that as an African, we Africans must be able to drive our investments and to be able to drive our development on our own. We're looking too much abroad. We're looking too much outside. Investors have to come from Denmark. Investors have to come. Nigerians can invest in Cameroon. Chadians can invest in Cameroon. South Africans can invest in Cameroon. So this local regional investment is extremely important than us looking at the old Europeans who are battling with economic crisis and they cannot sustain their own economies and we think that they will bring marginal, magical solutions to the African continent. I didn't dare make that kind of a speech here because this is not the African audience. But if I am talking to an African audience, Put the challenge to Africa. Invest in your country, invest in your neighbor. Don't look up to Europeans to be able to come do the this investment. Excellent, doctor. And uh, we hope our uh, the government of Cameroon will be able to take the necessary step yeah. to drive investors from Europe. Yeah. But before you go, you talk about the subsoil and the topsoil. Yeah. Then don't you think the Cameroonians need technology from well, Europe we'll to be able to achieve the, uh, all these goals? Well... There is something now that they call uh, technology circulation. Technology circulation doesn't necessarily mean that technology can only come from Europe to, to Cameroon or to Africa. Technology can also come from Cameroon to Europe. This is technology circulation. So I am against that whole aspect or that whole approach where we think Chinese technology
technology is the best, American technology is the best, or European technology is the best to be able to do things in Africa. What is clear is that we can be able to develop local technology that is suited to the context of the local situation, and we'll be able to drive our growth and our development. Why? Because the know-how is there. All what is missing is maybe just the fix of machinery and whatsoever. And I think African ingenuity is capable of being being able to meet up this challenge. Thank you so much. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is the Cameroonian diaspora, they organized this event. Can you tell one word to encourage them to do more or what's your comment about what they have organized today? I really commend this uh, initiative, but I should also say that the Cameroonian diaspora is not united. Cameroonian diaspora doesn't speak with one mouth. And uh, sometimes we really don't come out to support an initiative that is taken by one a single Cameroonian or one individual. So my plea or my cry is that we should be able to be much more united, show our solidarity and work forward as one person. This initiative was taken by an individual. An initiative cannot be taken by everybody, but an initiative begins from one person and then is replicated by the rest. So we just need to be more united, more in solidarity and work with one spirit. That's the only way we can stand the challenge from Europeans and the challenge of the daily lives or the challenges of the daily lives we are living okay. in. That is excellent. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Chris Lynn Treasure. Uh, nice meeting you. And it's been great and wonderful to see this event being solidly organized. How do you think about all these great initiatives can you tell us uh, like the as the chief organizer of this event i would say that uh, it was a piece of art put in place uh, by the consul uh, honorable uh, axel Jul johansen uh, this was to give the Cameroonians in Denmark the opportunity to, to feel united again and to have the taste of home while they are in a foreign country. And this initiative was, was supported by DDC, uh, which is Jaspera for Development of Cameroon, and which was also organized by me, my firm Elite Management, which I represent today. That's excellent. What do you... Of the woman there for her backside, her backside, and I can see it's true. Cause the way you want, <laughs> you make all the boys see it. Then they will like go hey. In my kwanina, what I mean she hey. In my kwanina, meru maru hey. My baby, you sweet like vitamin C. I love you, I love you, I love you, daddy. Yo. Baby, my baby boo. Don't come and keep a cry out of the way to make the dunks 
turn off. See the girls them whining, twining, chat. You see me penetrating, wanna do you more and more. Cool. The girls them do that, man a love a love a. So only for them a want to me. Cool. The girls them do that, man a bad man, man a rock them to the horn along. Yeah yeah yeah. Fine girls for the VIP, where the EK be the throw some assault. Yeah yeah yeah. For the party that the big nyan she's where they like to depend and love. Give me all the bounce, huh. bounce. Give me from the back and roll. Cool. Oh, uh-huh. 